Geelong is a 10,000 head feedlot. We're situated 30 kilometres north of Geelong, not far from the coast. All of our cattle are British bred cattle and our cattle are sourced from all over Victoria, southern New South Wales, south east of South Australia. So they're all the, the southern climate cattle. And being a southern climate, we're, we're in a cool climate. There's a big difference even in the southern feedlot north of the divide to the south of the divide. It's a totally different variable climate. Winter time is a big factor to us and it's challenging. Hence the reason for building this, this structure that we're standing under. We saw our biggest challenge as comfort of cattle and welfare of cattle during the cold, wet winter months. And by having the, the shed structure, we're actually getting the best of both worlds. We're getting shade in the summer, but we're getting that warm, clean, climate to keep our cattle clean and performing during the wet winter months. We identified with our end users, mainly being Coles, that there were issues of dirty cattle in the winter time. So we came up with the idea that if we had the shed where we can put the cattle on bedding, the cattle will start their feeding period in the outside pens and by moving them into the shed for the last 30 days on feed, it gives them a chance to dry out and any mud that's uh, caked onto their coats or their bellies, they rub it off on the bedding. And since we've gone to this system, we haven't had one mud penalty or any issues with dirty cattle on the abattoir floor. So it, it's obviously working very well. One of the key factors to this shed is the vent ridge up in the top of it. So the shed's 224 metres long, it's 48 metres wide, it's got 8 metre eaves and it's a 21 degree pitch roof. And in the top of that pitch there is a metre wide by 500 mil high vent ridge, pop-up ridge. And that is the whole secret to this shed working well. Yeah, we can stand here and we'll still get outside airflow coming through and even though that today that breeze is cool, the cattle are still comfortable in under the shed. They'll lie down, they'll spend a lot of the day camp, they'll come and feed and then go back and camp. But it creates its airflow and and lets the air circulate through the shed without the necessity for fans or ventilation, artificial ventilation. Even on a warm day, if, it, if it's dead calm outside, you can walk under the shed here and it'll be 10 or 12 degrees cooler, but you'll actually get a breeze because of that vent ridge, it's creating its airflow. We also have a big benefit of water harvest. Our water supply for the feedlot relies on three sources. It comes from dam water on non-permanent flowing creeks. We harvest the water off the shed and our backup is mains water. Mains water keeps us operational, but we try not to use it because it's very expensive. So for instance, last night we had 25 mil of rain last night. There's 225,000 litres of water that we captured last night that we're able to use back into the into the feedlot. If you multiply that over the year, it equates, equates to around about four and a half megalitres of water per year. That effectively is free water. And we can capture all that and, and reuse it. So that's a, a very big benefit to us. The other benefit that we really get out of the shed is we're using straw as our bedding. And after five weeks, we'll then do a total clean out of the, of the shed. And we're using all that back as fertilizer on our cropping country. And we're getting phenomenal results, particularly on canola, where our yields have gone from an average of just under two tonne to the hectare we're, this year we're currently averaging over three and a half to the hectare and at $900 a tonne, that's a lot of benefits to us. We've been able to cut our synthetic fertiliser uses by a third by using our natural fertiliser out, out of the feedlot and, and that's a massive benefit to us. Another big benefit we're seeing in the, in the shed is weight gain performance. Cattle are coming into the shed for that last 30 days on feed. Really, the, the data is telling us that last 30 days is where we're getting the best performance out of the cattle. It's when the cattle finish off and complete their feeding cycle. So by coming into the shed, we're seeing 0.2 to 0.3 better weight gain, kilo weight gain per day than in the outside pens. So a lot of our pens run east-west. We identify that as a major problem to put in traditional shade structures over the pens for our winter time. 
We don't want to have to go to a facility where we're putting shade up and taking it down for the winter. That's going to be prohibitive. It's a big expense, but if we're going to do that expense and do it properly, we feel we're better off putting out to get more bang for our buck into shedding. However, we'd still have some pens that run north-south. So in the very near future, we will do some slatted shade structures over some of those as a trial. And it's really interesting, when we built this shed running east-west, and it's probably a good point for anybody that's thinking about this in the future, on the south side of the shed in the laneway, during the winter time, you get shade in over that laneway. And it's very, very clear that in that shaded area, about half the width of that laneway, you don't get any drying effect in that laneway during the winter, whereas half the lane will dry out, the other half will stay wet and muddy. So that's really important to think how you're going to situate a shed and shading in the future, because if you've got that next to other pens and you get that shading effect over other pens, it's going to create probably more problems than, than you want to cope with. So, so that's vital. The time you factor in water, fertiliser, the social licence and performance, there's big, in, big returns to us for the investment that we're putting in the sheds and it's definitely going to be the way that we go in the future.